as a person that is going to buy an electric car, you know, I've been seeing all of these charging stations pop up, particularly, you know, Tesla's got th- their thing, but there's other cars, the Rivian and all these other cars, as, as Janice just pointed out, she could charge her car at her house. I was like, there's a black man doing chargers out in the streets. He's got to be on the carrot on the show. So first of all, tell me how you got into the charging business and where can we get your charger? Well, I've been in the game since 2010. You see, the original founders of Tesla had a separate company here in Southern California that brought me into the business. We're working with cities and the ports, making your electric car power the building. You know, so that's how I got in and stayed in. So we manufacture in California. We just opened up an office in Brooklyn. You can buy our chargers or online or through one of our resellers. Now, how is your charger? Di- so say say I have uh, any any kind of electric car that's not a Tesla or can can I charge a Tesla on your charger? We're the charger company of the people. You see, Tesla made them for Tesla drivers. You know, so for us, we decided that it needs to be equitable. So everyone gets to plug in with Kidget. Kidget, K-I-G-T. Yeah. Where'd you come up with this name, Paul? It just flowed because every great company has that two-syllable thing going, Apple, Google, Facebook. And so we were Keep It Green Transit. Then we made that pivot to being a hardware manufacturer. So we were Keep It Green Tech, but those were, uh, were taken on the URL. So we made up a word called Kidget, and it kind of stuck. So we Keep It Green Transit. Keep it green tech, keep it green team. Kidget. All right. And you have, um, I'm just looking at 220 volt level chargers. You have uh, chargers for just about everything. And it's sexy. It's a sexy charger. Uh, Thank you. Yes. Now, the thing I was thinking about, electric cars are classist, meaning, you know, people have to have a garage and you have to have a little coin maybe. Uh, to be able to access these these things, to have the convenience of having it at, at home, you have to have some money. Talk a little bit about the, the equity that Kidget provides for people all over, you know, no matter what your economic status is. Yeah, it's huge, right? We're expecting millions of more people to drive EVs, yet 70% of people drive pre-owned cars and the EV market isn't flooded with affordability. And a lot of people, especially in California, rent. So one thing we've worked with are low-income family developers where we put them inside the home and they get the charge for free. Some projects we have in Oakland and San Jose area where they're going to put an electric car for rent on demand so that the people in that housing community can rent it to go buy groceries, even do ride share. So for us, our projects with the churches down in South LA and Hollywood, one of these projects we have here in Ontario in our backyard in a disadvantaged community, legislation that people may know them as opportunity zones. We figure we put them where the people are at. We let people charge for free through our software. And that way it enables more people to charge and be part of this. Paul Francis is here, CEO, co-founder of Kidget, which is an yeah. e-charger. And you can go to kidgetinc.com, K-I-G-T, inc.com, check out the products. You have a home mini e-charger what is this? How does it work? Talk to me about it. Yeah. Okay, Karen, let me ask you, if you had a gas pump at your house, would you ever go to the gas station? Hell no. <laughs> but I live in Jersey, so the gas station in Jersey is not a problem because they pump my gas. And I don't have to get out. So I just, you know, I slide my money through a very cracked window and then they pump my gas. I tell them I do cash. So I don't get any change back. Keep the change. So I'm not touching anything because I'm germaphobe even before the huh. pandemic. I'm like, don't touch, don't, you know, so I calculate how much gas I need and then I bring the exact change. But yeah, I would rather not go. You know, I mean, nobody wants to go. I've been through Jersey. We were in Atlantic City this year and that was my first time kind of seeing someone take the handle and not social distance at the pump. So having a charger at home, it's, it's, it's a convenience, right? Because, I mean, imagine every morning you wake up, you have a full tank, right? And then when you leave the office, you still have a full tank. Then after happy hour, the charger's there, you have a full tank. And then when you get home at night, that car actually helps provide the power for your house or for your apartment building. All and right, car- please, wait, wait, pause there. Paul, Paul, pause. How... Does it reverse? So I've seen cars that charge inside and out. 
-hmm. So you're telling me your charger after my vehicle is fully charged can then provide electricity. So there's a, there's a power outage in my area. My charged car can provide electricity to my home. It can. So let me take a step back, but bring it to some more. Re so remember when Texas had that Arctic blast weather storm last year, mm -hmm. there was a gentleman who powered his home with his truck. We powered a third of a city's parking lot lights with one electric car 10 years ago. So one thing has to happen. The automotive companies are now the new cars coming out like Ford and GM, Nissan. They have that capability. Hyundai, so Hyundai, the Ionic, the Ionic is a two way. I don't want to, I don't know. I don't want to speak. No, it is. Hyundai Ionic. I know they're advertising. It's a two way charger. You can charge on the oh. inside and out. Well, then see, we're trying to get with one of them. Honda, if you're out there, we submitted our project to you uh, two months ago for your award contest. Let us know. Uh, we got a grant to actually do this from the state of California with University of California Riverside. So yeah, the car will power your home. So imagine when you get home, you can schedule the charging session, right? I don't wanna charge when electricity costs the most. I want my car to power my house. And then when electricity is cheap, I'll press the button on the kitchen charger that we're the first home touchscreen charger. So you have that nest feel. So you can get the basic one, but if you want all the smarts and intelligence and not have to download another app, you get the smart mini. There's no additional electrical costs. You could do the scheduling and we have a rewards program where you can earn money from actually charging your car. And that's all $700, boom. $700, you can have a charger in your home. 700 for the mini and then $999 for the smart mini. This is amazing. Um, tell me your bit about the business, Paul. Uh, you know, everybody's going green. Electric is the wave of the future. Everybody's, I feel like everybody's going to have an electric car in the next 10 years. And it should, because we should reduce our carbon footprint. How, how did you get into this business, Paul? What's your background? Business entrepreneur. I was in transportation right after the recession. My daughter was born in 2008 on my birthday. Uh, she'll be 14 this month. But when the recession happened, I looked around and friends of mine were all competing for the same jobs with the same degree. And I learned at that moment, you got to pick something that's recession or even pandemic proof. And regardless, people need to move their butts. That's mobility. And people need to turn the lights on. That's That's power and energy. And I'm third generation energy, my grandfather, my mother. And so we started this business to blend both when we decided to be the only African-American manufacturer of chargers that's utility approved about what, eight years ago. That's when we say, you know, we need to make a charger that's for everyone, make our own software, our own proprietary technology, and let's see what we can do with the business and grow it. Now, if I'm in an apartment, Paul Francis is here. You can follow him at I am Paul Francis. I think that's on IG. I am Paul Francis on IG, and you can follow Kidget Inc. on Twitter and kidgetinc.com. I live in an apartment. Can I buy one of these minis and install it in my apartment or my somewhere in the in the parking lot of my apartment? I'm sure you can because you're Karen Hunter. <laughs> You have that influence and you know how to speak to people. No, I will just do it. I won't ask permission. I'm just going to put that <laughs> jaw up somewhere. That, and there's somebody that asked me, what is this? <laughs> That's what I would do. I'm oh, not going to so ask permission. You, but. Stuff for the consequences later. No, so yep. one thing, one of the issues, it's, it's still real estate. You need parking spaces. So the property managers, these owners of apartment complexes are, are real estate guys. And so one thing we do, we have a program called Kidget Cares. So we go and speak to them. We speak to the property manager. We explain to them how we can actually pay for the chargers, pay for 10 or 20 of them in the complex, reduce his cost of investment, make it where it doesn't cost him anything. And that way we're able to provide the amenity for you. We have a couple multifamily projects. We're doing that out here. That's why we moved to New York to try to get some going in the, uh, all the boroughs. OK, I, I like it. I like it. I mean, because, you know, there's a lot of cities like New York, there's Philly, Chicago, you know, there's places. And I think, you know, for us, we don't all live in a home with a garage, you know, and it's a little elitist. You know, so it's like I have a garage and my car is being, you know, uh, and it's not that you're you're rich, but, you know, not everybody has a car, a house with a garage. And, and you know, 
it's important that everyone has access to, to this because it is the future. It has to be equitable. The most important part are the jobs, blue collar, green collar jobs. Because every time I put a charger in the ground, I need a construction crew. Oh. I need an electric. So I hire local. Our engineers are black. My software engineers are Latin X. Our whole team is diverse. And we understand when we go put this, uh, our chargers up in South LA, we're working with 501c3 on that project there to provide more equitable charging down there in the Crenshaw area in Watts. We hire local electricians and other brothers and sisters from the church, from the local area to actually install these. So not mm -hmm. only are we saying bring more chargers, we want the community to have investment behind it so that they have ownership stake. They feel like they were a part of it. And let's put these chargers on light posts. Parking is scarce too in San Francisco and Los Angeles like New York. So it's just a matter of creative thinking and folks like you and the tenants and everyone getting together and figuring out how to make it happen.